was another action-packed season for the World Kiteboarding League in its second year as the world's top freestyle kiteboarders competed for the world title in five exotic locations on four continents in the world's first and only kiteboarding league by riders for riders. The season started off in Le Cat, France with the Mondial du Vent, after which it headed to the Netherlands for the Tessel Brunotti Kiteboarding World Cup before going on to the opposite shores of Europe for the Amarok Kiteboarding World Cup in Akyaka, Turkey. Then it was off to Africa for the El Guna RRD Center Kiteboarding World Cup in Egypt before the 2017 season was decided in Kumbuku, Brazil at the Super Kite Brazil World Cup. Best freestyle kiteboarders in the world gathered from dozens of countries with one objective, to be world champion. <music> Defending world champion was Carlos Mario of Brazil, who won the inaugural WKL season in 2016. And he was out on the water to defend his title in 2017, but he had to contend with some fierce competition from the likes of Spaniard Liam Whaley, who challenged Carlos Mario all the way to the end. It was a star-studded, talent-packed field with former world champions and emerging young challengers that made 2017 a truly special season. women's field, defending world champion Bruna Kaji of Brazil was again the favorite, but she would be pushed all the way by the likes of Dutch rider Annabelle van Westerop, Italian newcomer Francesca Bagnoli, Spaniard Rita Arnaz, and Czech Paula Novotna. The 2017 season kicked off in one of the world's premier kiteboarding locations, Le Cat, France, where the northwesterly Tramontana winds, unique climate and challenging conditions make this an ideal location for the Mondial du Vent, one of the most renowned kiteboarding events worldwide for the past 21 years. Once again, kiteboarding enthusiasts flocked in their thousands to watch the action unfold as the 2017 WKL World Cup got underway with nearly 70 riders from 20 countries competing. Yeah, the conditions in the cut are always very challenging. Uh, super strong winds, very gusty. Uh, some days very light as well, which makes it extra challenging. And of course, yeah, the top guys are here. Um, Bebe from Brazil, Alex Pasto from Spain, Liam from Spain as well. And of course, maybe some young new talents that, that can surprise us. After a hard-fought opening three rounds in the Men's Freestyle Elite League, it was all down to the semi-finals. First semi-final heat, Liam Whaley and Sesh Teixeira both had a comfortable path into the top two, claiming the first two final slots. In the other semi-final, Carlos Mario dominated the heat, but there was a two-way showdown for the second final slot between Aaron Hadlow of the UK and Stefan Spiesberger of Austria. Hadlow seemed to have clinched it with a 7.03 backside 315, but then Spiesberger rose to the challenge in a do-or-die final trick. A 7.13 slim 5 saw the Austrians snatch the last final ticket. In the final contested in front of large crowds that gathered along La Franchi Beach, it was Liam Whaley, Carlos Mario Sech Teixeira and Stefan Spiesberger. After the first three tricks, Teixeira was leading with Whaley in second and Spiesberger following closely in third, Carlos Mario in trouble with two uncharacteristic crashes. The fourth tricks, Spiesberger nails a seven-point slim chance, Liam Whaley strikes back with a fantastic 8.53 backside 315, the highest score of the heat. Carlos Mario down but not out. It's a backside 317 for a score of 8.47, Mario finding his groove again. But yet another showstopper from Liam Whaley, an 8.67317 places Whaley in the lead after Sesh Teixeira crashes. Carlos Mario goes out for his fifth trick, it's a heart attack 7, what an amazing trick and he receives a perfect 10 for this one. That's a first ever 10 score in the WKL. Mario says it ain't over yet, Spiesberger and Teixeira fail to find an answer to the kind of form Mario and Whaley were producing on their last tricks and it became a one-on-one -on -one duel between Mario and Whaley. 
Liam Whaley rose to the Mario Challenge and produced three brilliant tricks of his own, including a 9.67 Slim 7 to keep the lead. But Mario also goes for a Slim 7, and his 8.83 score means Mario takes the lead from Whaley by a mere 0.7 difference. It all comes down to the final tricks for these two masters. Whaley goes out and nails a huge 8.23 Heart Attack 5. What a result under pressure as he takes back the lead by just 0.13. Carlos Mario going for his final trick. This is it. This will decide the title. Whaley looks on nervously. Carlos Mario crashes. Whaley does it. Liam Whaley is the winner of the Mondial du Vent 2017. The ladies' final was an outstanding display from the very start as all four riders showed how far the bar has been raised in female freestyle kiteboarding. Francesca Bagnoli produced three seven-pointers, as did Annabelle Van Westerop, who also scored an 8.4 slim on her fourth attempt. Bruna Cagia was in fine form, dominating with a nine-point slim in a four-way battle that came down to the final two tricks. Van Westerop needed eight points to topple Kajia. She scored an impressive 7.47 on her second last trick, hot on the heels of Kajia, but not enough for the lead. For her last attempt, Francesca Bagnoli needed an 8.91 score to clinch the title, but she failed to get a trick in. Then Van Westerop went out for her final attempt. Could she do it? She needed a big one. It was a brave shot, but she crashed out, and that gave a slim win to WKL number one Bruna Kajia by just 0.53. Bruno Kajia started the 2017 WKO World Cup off with a win. The World Kiteboarding League World Cup headed to the Netherlands for the 2017 Tessel Brunotti Kiteboarding World Cup, round two of the 2017 WKL season. The marshy sand dune covered shores of Tessel hosts one of the most important kiteboarding events of the year and the natural beauty of Tessel was the perfect backdrop to some of the best freestyle kiteboarding action in the world. In the men's heats, there was action from the get-go. Sesh Teixeira and Alex Pastor struggled early on in a close-fought Heat 1, but eventually Teixeira and Pastor emerged triumphant, edging out Christian Tio, Robinson Hilario, Jerome Clotens, and Adiori Corniel for the top two slots in Heat 1. In Heat 2, local favorite Dutch legend Yuri Zun took the lead early on, but Luis Alberto Cruz of the Dominican Republic rose to the Zun challenge. Zun then went one better, cementing his lead with a thundering 8.317. The fight for the second direct round three slot was on as Luis Alberto Cruz fought David Tony Juan of Spain. Tony Juan gave a brave fight with a 7.65317, but it wasn't enough to beat Cruz, who joined Zune into round three. Cruz beating Zune on the final tricks to take the winning spot in the heat, Zune coming in second. In heat three of the men's elite league, Liam Whaley, British champ Aaron Hadlow, Austrian rider Stefan Spiesberger, French riders Nicolas Delma and Paul Saran, and Simon Lamousse of Mauritius. It was a close fought heat, all riders struggling to find their form in the light and unpredictable conditions, but in the end, falling winds meant the heat would be cancelled, and that concluded the Tessel Brunotti Kiteboarding World Cup. Kiteboarding League headed to stunning Akyaka in southwestern Turkey for the third Elite League event of the season, the WKL Amarok Kiteboarding World Cup. Once again, the world's top freestyle kiteboarders were at the Amarok Kiteboarding World Cup, the field a mix of seasoned former world champion veterans and young up-and-coming talent as the biggest and most prestigious kiteboarding event ever held in Akyaka got underway. If anything defines Akyaka, it is the kiteboarding. Akyaka is one of the premier kiteboarding locations in the world, known for its reliable thermal winds, and it's a place that defines the very spirit and soul of the sport. Thousands flock to take in the spectacle, watching the action in the water unfold. I'm really looking forward to competing here in Akyaka. I've been here many times before, and I always feel like this is my second home here in Turkey. Right now, the level of the girls is really awesome. Everyone's pushing it so hard, and it just... It feels awesome to just be competing with everyone and just pushing it that bit more and uh, yeah, hope we give a really good show to everyone here. 
The first men's semifinal was an impressive lineup. Brazilian Sesh Teixeira and Alex Neto took the early lead, but Valgarat and Arthur Gilbert brought out some serious points to challenge the Brazilians. Clotens and Gilbert upped their game as Belgian rider Jerome Clotens took the lead after four tricks. Teixeira rose to the Clotens challenge to produce a 6.53 front blind mob that put the Brazilian back in the lead going into the final tricks. But Gilbert produced a solid 6.6 back mob 5 to snatch that second position from Clotens, bumping the Belgian down to a precarious third. The last man out was Alex Neto, but he was unable to beat either Gilbert or Clotens. Teixeira won the group, Gilbert and Clotens joined him in their first finals appearance in the WKL. Second men's semi-finals, the group of death. It was a star-studded field of six champions. Carlos Mario, Yuri Zun, and Liam Whaley all produced good opening tricks. Yuri Zun upped the ante on his second trick with a 7.77317, with Liam Whaley also coming out with a 7.67 double heart attack. Carlos Mario said game on. He went for a backside 317 and produced an intimidating 8.43 score to let the others know who was in charge. Luis Alberto Cruz went out for a solid seven-pointer on a backside 315, while Spiesberger also found his rhythm with a 6.9 on the same trick. Zun took the fight to Mario with a massive 8.37 backside 317. The winds were fading, however, the heat would be called off. With the fading winds and the lack of time, the men's elite league could not be finished. There would be joint scoring for the final 12 riders. The women's final was a who's who of world kiteboarding where all the world's top female kiteboarders were on hand for a spectacular battle for the 2017 Amarok Kiteboarding World Cup title in Akiaka. On their first tricks, all the riders went for a backside 313. On their second attempts, it was a mixed bag of tricks. Bruna Kajir rained on everyone's party with a thumping heart attack for a dominating 8.5 score, letting the field know who was boss. Hannah Whiteley rose to the occasion to produce an incredible 8.03 back mob, while Paula Novotna also came out and laid down a fantastic heart attack for 8.23, placing her right up there behind Kajia. Bruna Kajia went out one more time, and it's just as good as her second trick. She scored an 8.13 on her slim, solidifying her lead as she celebrated on the beach. Now every trick was do or die for Hannah Whiteley. Oh no, she crashed it, and her chance for a podium was gone. But Francesca Bagnoli was in it to win it, a tower of consistency so far, earning a seven-pointer on a Hinterberger Moab for her fourth trick, making her a contender for at least a podium finish. Rita Arnaus was up next. Could she bring it under pressure? Look at that, a magnificent heart attack for 8.33. The Spaniard is a contender indeed, and she is in form. In terms of best four of six tricks, she actually moved into the lead ahead of Kajia with that one. Could Kajia be beaten? But no such luck for Van Westerup, a crash on her fifth attempt suddenly put her campaign in trouble, leaving her back in fifth. Bruna Kajia knew she needed to get another solid score to reclaim her lead. A 6.87 back to blind did it for her. She was back on top, and it all came down to the final tricks in the women's final. Bagnoli went for an S-Ben to blind, but it was a five-pointer, and that ends any podium hopes for the Italian. Paula Novotna needed a big point here, but she crashed it. Bitter disappointment for the Czech rider. She still had a chance at a podium, but her fate was now in the hands of others. Rita Arnaus would go for it on her final trick. Could she take the lead and the win with a big score? She landed a slim chance for 6.7. It's good, but not good enough for the win. Bruna Kajia has it. She's guaranteed to be the champion. All eyes on Annabelle Van Westerup. Would she get another podium? A wonderful heart attack from the Dutch rider from Aruba, and she waits for her score as she's dragged toward the beach. 8.37, that shoots her up from sixth spot to third. What a last gasp effort, and Van Westerup is on the podium. I'm lost for words right now. <laughs> this is like a lot of emotions. I'm so happy, and I wanted to do really well here in Turkey because it's such a special spot. I'm so proud to be doing good here and to have win here in Turkey. Thank you, Tark. You're amazing. You are forever in my heart.
WKL World Tour headed to idyllic El Guna, Egypt for the El Guna RRD Center Kiteboarding World Cup, round four of the 2017 season. El Guna is an idyllic setting for the WKL with magnificent sandy beaches, clear blue waters and a mountainous backdrop. It's also one of the world's best kiteboarding locales with stable winds, flat waters and warm temperatures. In the men's WKL Elite League, Spanish rider Liam Whaley led the men's world standings ahead of last year's world champion Carlos Mario Brazil with his fellow Brazilian Sech Teixeira third. In the women's elite league, Bruna Kajia was on top of the world rankings going into round four with Annabelle Van Westerop, Akiaka podium placer Rita Arnaus, Francesca Bagnoli and the likes of Paula Novotna and Teresa Tabel right on her tail. There were three former world champions and an up-and-coming champion in the making in the first of the semis as Alex Pastor and Liam Whaley up against Brazilian powerhouses Carlos Mario and Sesh Teixeira. Carlos Mario continued his phenomenal form in the early rounds with an intimidating 9.4 heart attack 7 to kick things off, but then world standings leader Liam Whaley started to put pressure on the world champion with an 8.83 backside 3.17. Pastor and Teixeira started to find their rhythm as well by their fourth tricks, both going for a slim seven, Pastor scoring 7.77, Teixeira 7.5. Mario went from strength to strength, bettering his last score with a near perfect 9.93 KGB7, which guaranteed the heat win. Pastor struggled, the fight for the second final slot was between Whaley and Teixeira. Whaley knew he needed to rise to the occasion, and rise he did, a brilliant 8.87 KGB5, that was all he needed. Whaley joined Carlos Mario in the finals. In the second men's elite league semi-final, outstanding Brazilian Alex Neto was up against three Dominican riders, Posito Martinez, Luis Alberto Cruz, and Adiuri Corniel. All four riders produced one high-scoring trick after the next in a very tight-fought heat, but it was a splendid 8.23 Slim 7 that shook things up and shot Cruz up into the lead. Aduri Corniel kept his cool and his rhythm to seal a 7.43 double heart attack that gave him the edge and moved him past Cruz to take the helm. Cruz was a tower of consistency in the semis, landing every trick to finish second behind Corniel and join his countrymen in the final. After two great semi-finals, the Women's Elite League final was all down to four riders. Francesca Bagnoli, Paula Novotna, Annabelle Van Westerop, and of course, Bruna Kajia. The wind started to subside at El Guna, but world champion Bruna Kajia found enough of it to power through a well-executed backside 3-1-3 to score 7.63 and move into the lead from the get-go. Francesca Bagnoli went out for her second trick in 8.17 slim as the Italian snatches the lead from Kajia. Van Westerop rises to the challenge to land a 7.83 back to blind, while Kajia goes for a huge heart attack on her second trick, and she nails it with near perfect execution, 9.39, the Brazilian ace takes the lead from Bagnoli. After her two opening crashes, Paula Novotna had to produce big points to stay in the running, it's a heart attack, and what a heart attack, 9.03, that's exactly what she needed. Annabelle Van Westerop produced an exceptional 7.9 slim followed by a 6.9 backside 3-1-3 and the lead changed hands yet again, Van Westerop in the lead as Bruna Kajia crashes her fourth trick. Bagnoli goes for a heart attack on her fourth trick to score a spectacular 9 points and then an expert 8.1 Hinterberger mope and she becomes the main challenger for the title against Bruna Kajia. It's down to the final tricks, Kajia knows she needs to rise to the challenge, she goes for a KGB and what a KGB, 9.57, well deserved congratulations all around for Kajia on the beach. Bagnoli is not going to back down, she goes for the same trick as each rider pushes the other to the limits, it's a 9 pointer, but it's not enough to unseat Kajia who once again produced a memorable victory. It was all down to the final round to see who would be the 2017 WKL World Champion. In the men's elite league final, it would be two Dominican riders, Luis Alberto Cruz and Adjuri Corniel, versus two world champions, Carlos Mario and Liam Whaley. Luis Alberto Cruz kicked his session off with a 7.67317. Carlos Mario went out and nailed a fantastic heart attack 7 for a score of 9.3. Cruz went for a slim 7 on his second outing. Good execution, a little shaky at the end, but it gives him the provisional lead. Liam Whaley knew he had to come up with a big point, and he did, producing a very good 3-1-7 for a score of 8.3. Adjuri Corniel also got back on track with a 7.63 double heart attack. 
as Carlos Mario continued to lay down incredible scores. A Judy Corneille kept up the challenge, nailing two gorgeous tricks in a row. An 8.83 on a backside 317, followed by an 8.8 .8 on a slim 7. Whaley came up with a do or die 8.63 off a heart attack 5, just trying to stay in contention at this point. Luis Alberto Cruz knows he has to go hard and go big, very big, oh, and it goes wrong for him, it's a big crash. He's checking his ribs, it looks painful. His countryman, Adil de Corneo, rushes to his side. He was taken to the hospital, subsequently recovered quickly. Back to the heat, back-to-back -back crashes on his fifth and sixth tricks meant Whaley's chances for a podium had vanished. Tough final for the young Spaniard. Corneo was the only man who had any chance of challenging Mario, and although his 7.97 off a 317 is good, it's not enough for a win, but he does move up into second position. The man of the hour is Carlos Mario. This is his final. A backside 319 is a rare trick to see, and not many riders have the nerve or the skill to try it, but Carlos Mario is not just any rider. There it is, unbelievable. The crowd can't believe it. It's a perfect 10. Whaley and Cornea finished off with two good tricks, trying to at least give the spectators a farewell show, but all eyes were on Mario to see what he would do on his final trick, now that the title was guaranteed. It's amazing and incredibly executed Hinterberger Mob 7, and believe it or not, it's another perfect 10-pointer. Carlos Mario is the resounding Men's Elite League winner of the El Guna RRD Center Kiteboarding World Cup 2017. What a performance from him throughout this event, and what a finish in that final, with two perfect tens and no trick below nine points, a superhuman feat. Corniel is a well-deserved runner-up, and Luis Alberto Cruz still manages a third place despite laying down just four tricks. Kiteboarding League World Tour headed to one of the most idyllic kiteboarding locations in the world, Kumbuko Beach, for the WKL Super Kite Brazil World Cup, the final round of the season where the men's and women's world champions for 2017 would be decided. The favorite is local rider and defending WKL world champion Carlos Mario, but Mario first has to beat the likes of Liam Whaley, who was on top of the world rankings most of the year, and also his fellow Brazilian Sesh Teixeira, ranked third going into this final event. In heat one of round one, Luis Alberto Cruz from the Dominican Republic started the day with a bang, throwing an impressive 317 right at the start. He continued riding exceptionally well, despite the rib injury he sustained in Alguna. He passed directly into the next round, joined by young Brazilian rider Manuel Suarez, only 17 years of age, who rode a fantastic heat, not crashing any of his tricks and beating the likes of Sech Teixeira. Heat 2 saw former world champion Liam Whaley struggle to gain his focus during the start of the heat, but managed to turn it around impressively towards the end, gaining some great scores that put him in first position on his last trick attempt. Adiuri Corniel finished second in the heat behind Whaley after riding consistently well, his motivation high after his podium finish in the last event in Egypt. <laughs> It was Stefan Spiesberger of Austria who took the win in Heat 3, beating out former world champions Yuri Zun and Alex Pastor. Spiesberger was on form and maintained good focus throughout the heat. Arthur Gilbert from France also put on a strong performance with some innovative tricks to come in second behind him. As the wind dropped dramatically by the end of Heat 3, the prospects for Heat 4 looked dim. Valgarat, Eric Anderson and defending world champion Carlos Mario were able to get some solid tricks in at the start of Heat 4, but the Heat eventually had to be abandoned before the third tricks. And so at the end of the final round of the WKL Super Kite Brazil World Cup, the WKL World Champions for 2017 were decided and crowned in Cumbuco Seara. Carlos Mario defended his crown in home waters to become the 2017 WKO World Champion. Liam Whaley of Spain, world runner-up, and another Brazilian, Sesh Teixeira, ends the season world number three. Estou bastante feliz, principalmente por receber esse título em casa. 
It's been such an emotional feeling for me to win here in my hometown and in my home country. I worked very hard to get here. Every moment on the water has been precious for me. Needless to say, I'm very happy with this result. Now I want to rest a little before I start training again to bring in more trophies for my country. In the women's, it was Bruna Cochia who dominated all year to defend her world championship crown. Annabelle Van Westerup finishing world runner-up. And what a cap to the season for Francesca Bagnoli, the Italian ending the season on the podium in third. It feels amazing to be able to be crowned world champion here in Brazil. I mean, as an athlete, it's everyone's dream to be able to represent their country well. And, you know, I'm so proud and I'm so honored to be able to do this here. And I can feel the energy of the people, you know, there with me. And this means so much more. It's been an action-packed second season for the World Kiteboarding League and the WKL Super Kite Brazil World Cup was a perfect ending to an incredible year. See you in 2018.